and welcome everybody back on YouTube and of course everybody here in Twitch chat hanging out for our Ravnica Allegiance set review. We're going through each and every card. So far we've gone through the five monocolored uh, sets with white, blue, black, red, and green and we're going to have multicolored and artifact both together here in this one. There's only around 20 artifact cards or so. So we're going to go ahead and put those together with the multicolor. Uh, this will be the longest of the, the videos, um, but there's lots of really good, interesting cards to kind of talk about here. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, put those together, and let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're, we're giving each card a letter grade, um, A through F. We're going go, uh, to go ahead and... Go over the grading scale again here quickly um, if you're just joining us or um, if uh, this is the only video that you're watching later. If you're watching this one first. So A through F. A is a format all-star among multiple archetypes. My examples are Jade Light Ranger, Lava Coil, Adanto Vanguard, Ravenous Chupacabra, and Search for Escanta. B is a format staple among multiple archetypes, including sideboard cards or a defining card in a single highly played archetype. My examples are Merfolk, Branchwalker, Lightning Strike, Takali Honor Guard, Duress, and Sinister Sabotage. C are cards that see some regular amount of play in the format, or is maybe an important card in a single highly played archetype. Okay, I gave Angel of Grace an A-. minus. There we go. That was close. Uh, Druid of the Cowl, Shock, Dauntless Bodyguard, Playcrafter, and Radical Idea. D are cards that will just see a slight amount of play in the format, or it has like a fringe archetype built around it. So... Uh, slight sideboard cards, uh, things like that, like Crushing Canopy and Invoke the Divine, or s slight main deck cards with Gutter Snipe, Lookout's Dispersal, um, cards built around like Lich's Mastery, Haphazard Bombardment. Benelish Marshal I'd rate as a B. I think Benelish Marshal would be a, a defining card in a single highly played archetype. I think it's you know it's a defining card in mono white aggro, but not really played anywhere else. Can't can't really play it anywhere else. So I would I'd have Benelish Marshal as a B. Um, this is my fir very first set review, so I, I didn't have a rating for Ar yeah, for Arclight Phoenix or anything else, any other set review. This is my only one. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, F is seasonal play in the format. So these are like the, the cards that are uh, like draft commons and everything or like some rares that see no play like Oath Go Dries, Al Alpine Moon, and so on. So you can read some more about that. Uh, down below in the info panel if you're watching on YouTube. And here we go. Uh, first card is Absorb. Counter target spell, gain three life. So I had Sinister Sabotage as a B. As like a counter spell, surveil one. I'm thinking we're kind of right there too. A lot of people are also just kind of like B. Counter target spell, you gain three life. I think that's very comparable to Surveil 1. Um, potentially better in some matchups, potentially worse in some matchups. Um, you also have the harder to cast, uh, costing cast of just white being added in there also. I think this is also just a B. Um, it is great against red, uh, which is, you know, usually blue white decks want great cards against red, but it's also not as useful against some other parts of the format. Um, I think this is just kind of very similar to Sinister Sabotage on in a power level. Against like against red decks, it's a lot better than Sinister Sabotage. Against control, it's a lot worse. You know, so I think I think we'll just go with B as well. But yeah, I think this is a main deck card. I think this is good for like your your best of one decks and stuff. For sure. But yeah, this this is it's a good card. The three life uh, is quite a bit of life. Um, that it's basically like counter two spells against red if they're using like things like uh, um, the critic, the skewer, the critic, and stuff to deal damage to you. Jarek with the sub, thank you so much for that sub there, eighth sub of the day. If we get to our two more, we get our next goal. That means we're gonna be cracking open another Ravnica Allegiance pack on the seventeenth. Whenever we're doing our twelve-hour stream on the seventeenth. Uh, playing lots of limited, lots of seals and draft there from 11 to 11 Eastern. Hope you all join me for that. 
Jerry, thank you so much. All right, Era Monkeyless. Um, one green blue for a two three flying that has two green blue adapt one. Hmm. This card, I mean, you got so you got three mana flyer and it can adapt. This is just gonna be an F. Um, certainly thinking if like this could see like a little bit of play and some different things but i mean the standard is a really powerful format like we have cards like thief of sanity this this is an f applied biomancy green and a blue for an instant choose one or both target creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn or return target creature to its owner's hand f Azorius Knight Arbiter. Three, this is a common three white blue for a two five vigilance. Azorius Knight Arbiter can't be blocked. Huh. It's an unblockable five drop, but only has two power and has vigilance. Still F. But yeah. Interesting. Next up, Azorius Skyguard. Four white blue for a three three flying first strike creatures your opponents control get minus one minus zero. Well, all all sets are going to have a lot of Fs. Think about how there's five sets in standard right now, which means there are if if there's two hundred and fifty cards a set uh, times five, you're looking at uh, that's like a thousand plus 250 so 1250 cards think about realistically the number of cards that are played in standard you know what 250 300 you know so you're looking at like you know 800 to a thousand cards in like the other sets being f's so yeah uh so yeah lot, lots of sets are built for limited and everything so it's okay to have lots of lots of uh f's but yeah this is another one Like, that's just to be expected that there's going to be a lot of F grades. All right, Basilica Bell Haunt. Uh, this is white, white, black, black for a 3 4. When Basilica Bell Haunt enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card and you gain three life. So, you know, this is just part of like the cycle of the, the XX white, the XXYY cycle that we've seen. It's kind of crazy how some of these cards are so not good and other cards are so ridiculously good. When you look at like the difference between Crackling Drake and True Fire Captain, for example, or something like that. Um, art and flavor, A plus on this one. Absolutely. This is, that's a really cool card. Um, I think a lot of people are saying D and I, I kind of want to go D also. I don't really want to just give this an F, even though maybe this is just an F. I mean, it does ETB, they discard a card. If, you know, if you do have, like, your deck kind of built around opponent discarding card and stuff, and it also is good against red with the gain life, and it's a good body against red. This is good there. I kind of want to just give it a D. Um, but apparently this got changed right before release. Oh, yeah, because this is not very good. Um... You know, like, yeah, it's just not that good. But, yeah, Golgari, Golgari Fine Broker is okay. This is definitely worse than Golgari Fine Broker. Um, I'm going to give it a D. So, uh, Magic Arena will be available on... Uh, Ravnica Allegiance will be available on Magic Arena um, on the 17th. All right, next we have we have a rare, Bedevil. Uh, this is Black, Black, Red instant destroy target artifact creature or planeswalker a lot of people are saying a in chat and i completely agree this is an a i think this is just a very very good removal spell uh destroying you know artifact creatures and planeswalkers not enchantments which if it said enchantment creature or planeswalker it'd certainly be even better because we've seen how many good enchantments there are um but yeah, this is a format staple. This is a Lava Coil level card. This is an A. Uh, yeah, we'll have Mortify in a bit that hits enchantments. Isn't it weird? Usually when you see like these kind of colors, you see one and then the two. 
I felt like this is weird that it's two and then one, that it's BBR and not RBB. Like, doesn't, it, it looks weird to me. I don't, I don't know if I'm, I'm just being a little off there or something, but that, that looks a little weird to me that it's just the color, like that's, I don't know. Okay. So they're always in Wooburg order no matter what. Okay. Which, which would make sense. Okay. We've always seen like, like the two color cards, the same color order, which that makes sense. But just when it's like the multi like that, but okay. But yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, next card. Biomancer's Familiar. This is green and a blue for a 2-2. Two, two. This is a rare. So we got two mana, 2-2. Two, two. Activated ability. Oh, yeah. That does not follow Wooburg. Yeah, it does not. Because it would be, be blue and then green. So, yeah. <laughs> People are saying it, it always follows Wooburg and then the very next card it doesn't. So, wait. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> it's Wooburg woo woo order. Yeah, so I don't know. I, I wish B Devil was red, black, black myself. Anyway, back to the card. We got two mana two two. Activated abilities of creatures you control cost two less to activate. This effect can't reduce the amount of mana an ability cost to activate to less than one mana. So if you had activated abilities that would cost two colorless by itself, they would still cost one. So it cannot activate to be less than one. Uh, and of course, it only it only reduces generic costs. It does not co- reduce uh, the colored symbol cost. Then it also has tap. The next time target creature adapts this turn, it adapts as though it had no plus one plus one counters on it. So that second part being how means that you you basically can adapt multiple times on the same thing. So this seems real good with Squadron Goif. Is it? Is it really good with Squadron Goyf? It's like, what activated abilities do we really need to... Like, it's still just a... It's a 2-mana two 2-2. Two, two. I'm, not, I'm not seeing this card. Um, so, you don't get... You don't double the amount of counters... Like, whenever you put the the Squadron Goyf would still only gain two counters. It just, you know, costs two less. It only costs a green to activate for the first time and then you can tap this and you can activate it for another green but like does that mean like is this card worth it to put in your deck just so you can like adapt some more like wouldn't it be better just to put some other card that like interacts with the opponent a lot a lot better in your deck than than this card yeah it does make adapt creature cheaper sorry it does make adapt cheaper and you can adapt some more is that really even worth a card, though? Yeah, it works well with Salamander Drake. Like, wouldn't you rather just have, like, a a dive down to protect your Salamander Drake? And also, like, kind of make it cheaper? I don't... I don't... I'm not loving this card. I would... I think this is... I'm pretty skeptical that this card is going to see any play whatsoever. I could certainly see this being an F and not seeing any play whatsoever. Okay, so think this is a sleeper. Some people are thinking this is a sleeper in chat. I, I'm going to go ahead and rate this like a, a C minus. I don't think this is like Druid of the Cowl, Playcrafter, Shock. I don't think it's on that level. It's like a C minus or maybe maybe D actually just fringe deck so yeah it it is great with zakama you have zakama in play cuz cuz you know what you need like when you have zakama in play you need you need things to make it better <laughs> it is great uh yeah okay so d cuz it is the build around card so yeah i'm going to give this a d but i i I'm, I'm not feeling this one i'm i'm giving it a d All right, Bulrak Clan Crusher. Uh, three red green for a 4 4. Tap, remove a 1 1 counter from a creature you control. It deals 2 damage to any target. It's an F. Captive Audience. 
This is a mythic right here. Five black and a red for an enchantment. Captive audience enters the battlefield under the control of an opponent of your choice. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose one that hasn't been chosen. Your life total becomes four. Discard your hand or each opponent creates five 2-2 two -two black zombie creature tokens. This is a fun card. I like it. Um... All right, so if we're if we're ramping with like that that thing that can tap and add three mana and everything, yeah, it doesn't target. So yeah, no protection from Shalai. And it's also you get all right. So you spend your seven mana. You give this enchantment to your opponent. They immediately they like let's say they're tapped out, right? Your opponent's tapped out because you know they don't they don't counter it or anything. So your opponent's tapped out. You cast this card. You give it to your opponent. Your opponent untaps. It's their upkeep. This just triggers immediately. You know, so it's. It's that kind of thing that it works right away if they're tapped out. They're not going to have, like, time to, to like, try to remove it and that kind of stuff. Um, wait, Fibbletip's in there? Where's Fibbletip? Is that Fibbletip? That's not Fibbletip, is it? Um, yeah, sorry. Ugh, I'm getting notifications in this group chat. Let me mute it real quick. Sorry. Um, that is Fibblethip. Okay. And so, if you choose, so then, yeah, you have a tough choice here. So, you, you probably don't want to discard your hand, but, of course, this is a seven mana card. Like, you may not have cards in your hands. You may just be able to discard your hand. Uh, you know, like, the five, five zombies, that could be something tough, but you could have, like, a sweeper for that. And, and so on. Your life total becomes four. Maybe it's two. <laughs> Maybe you gain life. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a build around card, but this is, I don't think this is like a sideboard card that people will have in like their mid range or control decks or anything like that. I think this is just kind of like a, a deck that you build around. I think this is like a Lich's Mastery, Haphazard Bombardment kind of thing. Definitely A plus for fun. I like this card quite a bit. Um, I'm, I'm excited to play this card. I'll be brewing with this card for sure. I'll be playing this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go with the Deke with, for this rating with, uh, this being just the build around car like haphazard bombardment and lich's mastery and stuff like that so let's go with the d and uh i'm excited to play this card though super super fun super fun all right cinder vines red green enchantment this is a rare whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell cinder vines deals one damage to that player no sorcerer spyglass does not stop that enchantment no it does not have any activated abilities. Sorcerer Spyglass only stops activated abilities. So look at like Cinder Vines here. See how right here there's a colon? It has like it has like a cost and then a colon. That's an activated ability. Sorcerer Spyglass can stop that. There's no there's no activated ability here. As you can tell, there's no colon anywhere on here. There's no cost and then a colon. So there's nothing for uh for a Sorcerer's Spyglass to do. Anyway, whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, Cindervine deals one damage to that player. Pay one, sacrifice Cindervine's destroy target artifact or enchantment, and then Cindervine deals two damage to that permanent controller. A lot of pretty good ratings here with, with this card. Um, a lot of people going with B in, in the chat. So, this, so, let's just kind of talk about the second part of this. So you have red, red green to put this enchantment out, and then you can use the colorless at any time. To, and sacrifice it to destroy target artifact or enchantment and it deals two damage to the permanence controller. Let's think of that as like an instant or a sorcery and you're paying one red green so like three mana to destroy an artifact or enchantment and deal two damage to the permanence controller. Um, that could kind of be worth it. Uh, that's like that's, that's a decent sideboard card kind of thing. And this is like, I guess, I guess a little better because you can pay the red green like a one turn and then like wait later on and, and so on for just that part so how good is the first part of this in standard i know it's probably pretty good like people are saying against like storm and kci and stuff like that in modern yeah so it's good against like nexus right but i guess they'd, they'd have like ways to deal with it with, like to fairy how good is that first part every time they cast a non-creature spell you deal one damage i think that's going to be like what if that card turns into a a B. I don't think this is like duress level cyborg. I think like C or B minus. Um, but yeah, if the, like the wilderness reclamation 
Nexus of Fate deck, this is a really good card against that deck. A uh, really good card against that deck. Something like Grixis Control would have to race it. That's true. Like, they'll have to, you know, like, if they don't have a way to remove this, they have to just kind of race it with, like, their uh, creatures and things like that. Um, but, yeah, if you're playing, like, a, a Jund Burn deck, um, you can if you can splash green for and burn. Maybe you want to splash green in your uh, Theater Horrors and Experimental Frenzy deck for not only this card, but then also for Wayward Swordtooth. So you can play lots of extra lands with your Theater Horrors and Experimental Frenzies. Um, and just kind of keep rifling through the deck. So maybe you're going to play like a Jund, Jund version of that with this with this card. Could certainly be a thing, for sure. I'm going to go B minus. You know B minus. Interesting card here. Good against. Is it? Um, yeah. I mean, just people casting spells. You certainly need you certainly need the damage to to matter. You don't want to play a slow green red deck too much with this, where like that damage doesn't matter as much. All right, Clan Guild Mage. Uh, next card. Red, green, 2-2. Two, two. Um, you can pay one and a red, tap it, target creature can't block. Or two and a green, tap it, target land you control becomes a 4-4 four, four elemental creature with haste until end of turn. I think these are just Fs. I, yeah. I think the Guild Mages are just Fs. People are saying C minus, C plus. I, I don't think that that card will see any play. Or let's see, this one. This one's a merfolk at least. Com this is combined guild mage. Green and a blue for a 2-2. Two, two. Um, one and a green at tap. This turn, each creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. One and a blue tap, move a plus one plus one counter from target creature you control onto another target creature you control. This one has a lot of things going for it. This I think is a D. Yeah, I think Simic this I think this one's a D. This one has a lot of good things going for it in a Murfolk kind of deck also. Um it does, you know, like the, the extra mana that you have to spend is kind of annoying in like a Murfolk deck where you're trying to get out on the battlefield quickly and you're you know trying to be aggressive in a Murfolk deck. Like you do have to spend two mana for a two two, and then you have to have two mana for like also in addition to playing like the creature, and then also have like the mana for the creature. It's a that's a lot of mana. Um, yeah, and it's a wizard too. Uh, yeah, the NFL Combine Guild Mage. Uh, I'm I'm gonna go with a D here for this card. Maybe D plus. I don't think any anybody outside of a Merfolk deck would want to play this. I don't think. I mean, it, it, the course works well with Adapt. Works well with like some of like the the creatures that we've seen that like whenever they gain a one one counter, they're like way better. Um, I think I'm gonna go D plus though. It has okay abilities. But what's its forty time? Uh, next up is Cult Guild Mage. Black. Red. It stops adapt. Well, like the the green part stops adapt. I was saying like the the blue part is okay. Is pretty good with adapt. How you can move like the one one counters around. That's what I was thinking of. The the blue part being good with adapt. Three and a black target player discards a card. Activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery, or red tap and it deals one damage to target opponent or planeswalker. So yeah, the spectacle part, like the red part, of course, is just an obvious way to, to turn on spectacle. Um, and then you can also just spend four mana and make your opponent discard a card, I suppose. The cards in standard are good. This is not going to be played in a Rakdos deck. I think this is an F. I don't, I don't think this is, yeah, this just doesn't fit. There's a lot better cards in Rakdos. I don't. I don't imagine a scenario where that's one of the best 60 cards put in your deck. That's an F. Deputy of Detention. This is an interesting one here. This is a um, a rare one white blue for a 1-3. So three mana 1-3. When Deputy of Detention enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls and all other non-land permanents that player controls with the same name as that permanent until deputy of detention leaves the battlefield. 
All right, so I'm going to start with I'm not as high on this card as some people are uh, for standard. So standard, a three mana one three is basically a body that doesn't matter. Um, and like the one power, it just doesn't attack like hardly at all. It's so, like game, like it's gonna be hard to like end games with like the one three, and you know it's real vulnerable. Whenever it dies, they get their things back, kind of thing. But like Chupacabra, like comes comes in and like kills a creature, and like that creature's gone. This can like exile something, and even like a cost of shaker exile something, but then you can then you can cast it. This just exiles something and all the other things with the same name. But then if they kill this, they get it back. Now we have a couple good good points of like this is really good against tokens. You just get to get rid of all of the tokens with the same name, and it's it's great against tokens. So it could be a sideboard for for token decks kind of thing. It is it does get rid of enchantments right because it gets rid of any non land permanent. So you want to get rid of like the wilderness reclamations or the um, experimental frenzies or theater of horrors or all the great kind of enchantments these days. You do get to get rid of enchantments. Um, you can get rid of planeswalkers. Also, you got you want to get that Teferi off the battlefield. Boom, did it. The thing is, is it's so vulnerable for like the the enchantments and planeswalkers and things like that. But it could be the kind of thing like where you need that enchantment to get off the battlefield, and then you turn the corner, and you have like some other things on the battlefield and and turn the corner. So um, yeah, let's so. It's great against tokens, right? It's like, um, yeah. So it's it's great, great against tokens, but it works perfectly with Shalai. It does work pretty good with Shalai with giving it hexproof. It is in the color of Dive Down. You know, being blue means you do have a you 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 are in the color of Dive Down. I think this is a solid card. Um, I. I think this is probably a C plus. I'm gonna go C plus here. I think it's a it's a it's an okay card, but I I don't think it's like spectacular. I'm gonna go C plus. I think it's like a little better. Like I have like Play Crafter at C. I think it's like a little better than that kind of level. I'm gonna go C plus. All right, we got some Planeswalkers. We haven't had any Planeswalkers yet. Our first one, Domri Chaosbringer. Two red green for a five loyalty planeswalker. Plus one, add red or green to your mana pool. If that mana is spent on a creature spell, it gains riot. So we're looking at um, ticking up, giving your creatures riot is awesome. The extra mana is awesome. Um, give, give your creatures haste. Um, creatures that already have haste with like riot, you make sure they get a counter plus haste, uh, and everything. Maskalar, I'll have to check. I'll have to, I'll have to check. I haven't, I haven't actually checked yet, but um, and it takes a little bit to up upload. But yeah, I'll let you know. I hope it's, hope it's helping. Uh, so that's really good. The other thing about this mana, usually when we see the planeswalkers add mana like this, that mana has would be like it has to be used on a creature spell kind of thing. Like we've seen with like Sarkin and, and other planeswalkers like that. Sarkin and Jaya. This is just mana you get to add, and you don't actually have to cast it on the creature spell. If you want to add a red mana so you can flip your Nicol Bolas, or you know, you can activate your Shalai, or you know, you can do whatever you want with your mana. Um, that's also a benefit. It's only one mana, but you do get to use it however you want. All right. That's the that's the tick up. Minus three. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal them. You may reveal up to two creature cards from among them and put them into your hand. Put the rest onto the bottom of your library in any order. So four is not a lot of cards. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the loyalty is is a good amount. Five loyalty for four mana is good. Um, four is not a lot of cards. I. I think you will you will whiff on finding two creatures quite a bit. If we think about like playing Militia Bugler, uh, Militia Bugler whiffs on one creature a decent amount. Two creatures, you're gonna be whiffing quite a bit. Hey Yud, so 
just letting you know, that's not always, I think a lot of people are looking at this and just thinking it's it's five mana, draw two. You don't, you don't you're don't you not gonna draw two all the time. There's gonna be a, a large percent of the time where you only draw one or draw zero. You will be drawing zero sometimes. Uh, you can maybe think about like when you tick up Vivian Reed. Vivian Reed, like how many times people tick up Vivian Reed and grab a land like in the late game because they didn't hit a creature. Yeah, Vivian does the same with tick up a lot of times. So, but this is gonna be like minus three and you miss and it's gonna feel awful. Um, if you run 30 creatures, it's kind of hard to, I mean, it's kind of hard to play 30 creatures, but you could, I guess you could have maybe 30 creatures. But yeah, so just just kind of just kind of letting you know, because I mean, you're gonna want to play like Vivian Reed also, right? And you're gonna want Dom Reed, you're gonna want Vivian Reed, you're gonna want some removal. It's kind of hard to put thirty creatures, but yeah. Um, so somebody said that with twenty six creatures, you average one point five creatures per activation. Okay, I I can't confirm or deny that. That sounds like a reasonable. Oh yeah, Registrar Alfie Hasty for sure. So that's what Domri does. The minus eight is an emblem where at the beginning of each end step, you make a four, four. That's certainly a good emblem. Um, anyway, I am, I'm excited to play Domri. This is, this is my favorite planeswalker in the set. This is one of my favorite cards in the set. I, I love planeswalkers. I love, uh, green, love, uh, Domri. I think this is a, like, like the old Domri. I loved playing it. I love green, red cards, creatures. This is certainly the kind of card I want to play. Is this card amazing? No. Is this an A? No. Um, is this a B? Yeah, I think this is a B. Maybe a B plus. Maybe a B plus. Giving your creatures riots pretty nice. But like if you play this, if you're behind, your opponent has a creature some creatures out. If you play this, you can't tick up. You're gonna have to minus and hope you hit. And then your Domri's certainly dead. It'll be down to two loyalty. Um would I put this in Naya value? Likely. Likely. I think I would I'd probably split up some of Johnny's with this. Um yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna go B plus with Domri. I like Domri a lot uh, myself. Just you know, that's those are the kind of magic cards I really like, and certainly excited for it. Oh yeah, Hasty Carnage Tyrant definitely scary, but it, if the format's faster, if there's a lot of like Rakdos stuff and everything, it could be kind of hard to get to to Hasty Carnage Tyrant because you know your Domri does have to survive to get there. All right, Dovin, one white blue. For three loyalty planeswalker, Dovin Grand Arbiter. Plus one, until end of turn, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, put a loyalty counter on Dovin. So that's all creatures that deal combat damage, you get loyalty counters. So this is similar to like Hawatli's plus one, where Hawatli just adds a loyalty counter for every single uh, creature you control. This is only the ones that deal combat damage, so it's a lot worse. Um, Ants and colors that don't care about creatures as much. Um, we, we have some people saying D plus and people saying A minus with this card and everything in between, I guess F and, and A minus everything in between. Hey mass, you've missed almost the whole set review so far. We're on, we're on multicolor. We're going through the, the last part here. Um, minus one, create a one, one colorless thopter artifact creature token with flying. You gain one life that you gain one life is a real thing you know like that's that's something not to be overlooked um that's something that people just kind of we like Psh, that's nothing that one life is 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 a nice benefit um oh so that's looking good so that's looking good and, and you'll be able to check out if you've been missing it you'll be able to check out the rest of the review on youtube uh so far the first four colors are, are uploaded on youtube so you'll be able to watch those after this i'm not going to be doing a limited review no i won't be doing uh, just the standard one. Um, and then minus seven, look at the top 10 cards of your library, put three of them into your hand and the rest onto the bottom of your library in a random order. So the minus seven is even, you don't get to cast those spells. It's basically just a, a draw three. It's it's dig through time, but you take three cards. It's, it's certainly nice. You know, it's good to cast dig through time. Um, but I, I mean, you look at ten. So it's stick through time. But you look at ten and you take three. But you're only putting them in your hand. Uh, this is not that good of a card. Um, it's very unique. 
And yeah, a lot of people are saying they like this card a lot. I think this is this is a card that's that's unique and it, it's a it's a very well designed planeswalker. I don't think it's that powerful though. I think it's very comparable to Jace Cunning Castaway that doesn't see very much play right now. Um, it can I think it's better than Jace Cunning Castaway as a card. I think making I think like the I think basically every mode or well the, the tick up and the tick down are both better than Jace Cunning Castaway. Um and uh, so I'm going to give this card a C plus is what I think I'm going to give Dovin a C plus. Um, it's not a fantastic card, but it's, it's a really well designed card. I think I'm going to give this a C plus maybe just a C actually. No, I'm going to go just to C. It, it can ult fast, but so does Hawali. Huali, it costs four loyalty, but Huali also ticks up for every creature you control. You don't have to deal combat damage with them, so you can tick up for all mana creatures and everything. And Huali's ultimate is unbeatable, which is like simply unbeatable. And Huali is not any good. So that's kind of hard. Dovin does get to make some Thopters, though. You know, just like three mana, make a Thopter, untap, make another Thopter. Yeah, you can kind of start doing some stuff with this. I don't think Kuali is way better than Dovin. I think they're they're comparable. Um, I could see Dovin being better than Huali. I I could definitely see Dovin being better than Huali with being able to make bodies. I think making bodies is is very valuable. It's at three mana and it makes one one flyers. I think this is probably better than Huali. And I'm I'm gonna go with the C. Yeah, Karn's definitely better than... I like Karn more than Dovin. I, I don't believe that digging through 10 and drawing 3 is way better than drawing 1 for each creature for the rest of the game in a deck that's built to make a lot of creatures, because that's what Hawali does. The, whole, the entire rest of the game, you always draw a card every time any creature enters. I think that's a lot better ultimate than what Dovin has. Uh, Divine Visitation with Dovin. Yeah, make those 4-4s. Four Heck yeah. All right, Dovin's Acuity. Let's keep it going. Uh, one white blue for an enchantment. When Dovin's Acuity enters the battlefield, you gain two life and draw a card. Whenever you cast an instant spell during your main phase, you may return Dovin's Acuity to its owner's hand. I think I think I'd give this card like... Um, so I, this is very similar. So just like the card that we definitely think of is Disinformation Campaign, Right. So this is like information campaign. Um, I gave Domri a B plus. Um, yeah, disinformation campaign, ETBs, you draw a card, the opponent discards a card. Your opponent discarding a card is usually more valuable than gaining two life. Um, with the scenario of when your opponent doesn't have a hand, of course, that's not uh, more valuable. In order to put disinformation campaign back in your hand, all you need to do is surveil which was something you want to be doing anyway. This you have to cast instance during your main phase, which is not something you necessarily want to be doing. I think this card's... I mean, this is not an unplayable card. This is not an F. You know, just spending mana to gain life draw cards can certainly be valuable in the right matchup. I think this is like a, a C- minus or a D+. Plus. I, I'm kind of in that range. I don't think it's a D. I think it's better than that. I think like, the card can still just generate a decent amount of value i think it's d plus or c minus um and i'm gonna go c minus i'm gonna go c minus i think it's closer to a c than a d with this we're just kind of spoiled by disinformation campaign yeah addendum also does want you to cast your instance in your main phase i'm gonna go c minus with that all right emergency powers Five white blue for a mythic instant. Each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library, then draws seven cards. Exile emergency powers. And it has addendum. If you cast a spell during your main phase, you may put a permanent card with converted mana cost seven or less from your hand onto the battlefield. So when I first saw this card... I didn't think this card was going to be very good. 
Uh, it will be after you draw. The addendum would happen later. So you would, yeah, it would be after you draw. You would draw your seven, and then you would, could put a permanent card. I didn't think this card was going to be very good until Wilderness Reclamation became a thing. And I do think that Wilderness Reclamation with this, with Nexus of Fate, it's another way to just go find more Nexus of Fates. And, you know, you have all the extra mana. That makes this scary, for sure. And you can you can put another Wilderness Reclamation into play if you cast this during your main phase and have two untapped triggers at your end step. If you have, like, your seven mana, then you can have, like... If you have, like, seven mana in play, you cast this during your main phase, put a Wilderness Reclamation in play, untap your lands, cast Nexus of Fate kind of thing. Yeah. So... That's the thing about Turbo Fog. I don't think Tur I don't even know if Turbo Fog is going to play Fogs anymore. So originally, this was going to have a, a lot lower grade. Now I think this is going to be B. I think this could be a define like a defining card in a single highly played archetype. So I, I think this is a B. I think this this is like a card that could just be a really important card to a highly played archetype. Um. Unfiltering your library is terrible for Turbo Fog. It's really not. Nexus of Fate shuffles your library already. Emergency Power shuffling your library also. It's fine. Oh, it reshuffles the graveyard into the library. Gotcha. Gotcha. It does reshuffle the graveyard. So that's good. So, that, I mean, that's not good. I mean, that's what I mean. But it's not good for Nexus because the graveyard goes into the library. So that's worse for Nexus. I see what you're saying there. Yeah. So I think it's still very good. I think it's still worth it. You can really make sure you only kind of use Teferis because even if your opponent answers for like your win con, if your opponent answers your Teferis, you shuffle them back. Your opponent's countered your Teferis before. You get to shuffle them back, put them back in, and try to draw them and put them. And you know, if you cast this during your main phase, put your Teferi into play also. Yeah. I, I'm going to go B. I think. I think this card could be good. All right. Next up. Ethereal Absolution. Four white, black enchantment. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one. And creatures your opponents control get minus one, minus one. Yes, yeah, so that's what I was saying, Slurs. All right, so your creatures get plus one, plus one. Your opponent's creature gets get minus one, minus one. And then two white, black, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. If it's a creature card, you make a one, one. This is, this is busted and limited. Busted and limited. Standard, though? Honestly, maybe not that bad. The plus one, plus one, and minus one, minus one is a big deal. It is a six-mana thing. So it's... I mean, it's kind of some like kind of similar to Immortal Sun. I'm gonna give this card. I'm gonna give this card a C. Well, if you're playing if you're playing Planeswalkers and you don't want to play Immortal Sun, but the thing is, is you can play this with Immortal Sun. Just because you have Immortal Sun in your deck doesn't mean you can't have this. Also, like maybe you're playing like an Abzan Ramp deck that you know you. You're playing like cards like Cleansing Nova, destroy all your opponent's creatures, kind of thing. You can have like hu get huge spirit tokens. Yeah, I'm gonna get this a C. I don't think it's just yeah. I think it's a card that you'll see like in the format some. I think it's it's very it's pretty powerful. Immortal Sun is better, um, but this does a lot of good things. Let's go see. All right, we're card 171. All right, final payment. White and a black instant as an additional cost to cast the spell. Pay five life or sacrifice a creature or enchantment. Destroy target creature. Are we real? Like, you're going to want to have a sacrifice effect for this uh, for the most part. Are we really paying this over all the other good removal in standard? I'm not I'm not so sure. Okay, I like D minus. Um, we we have a very similar card in standard already, you know, vicious offering. Uh, but you do get to have the option of paying five life. I'm I'm going I'm going D minus. 
I'm not so sure about that. Fireblade Artist. Black, red, 2-2. Two, two. Haste. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may sacrifice a creature. When you do, Fireblade Artist deals 2 damage to target opponent or planeswalker. This is what I'm saying when I said this is a Neff. You're not going to play Guild Mage. You have cards like this also. We've already... that's. This is like the third good Rakdos 2 drop that we've seen, I think. Like, this is good. Like, 2-2 two, two Haste is good. And then just... Like, when your opponent has, like, blockers out and you can't get through damage, you just get to sacrifice creatures and deal and start doming them. This is just a good card. Um, I think... I think this is... I think I'll give this a B. I think this is, like, Merfolk Branchwalker level, basically. I think this is just a card that can fit into multiple different decks. It's just a good two-drop. This is a, a solid B. Uh, it does... It can activate the spectacle... Uh, for sure. Uh, maybe a B plus even. Yeah, two man two two haste is good. Uh, yeah, this this is just this is just a, a solid card that you're gonna put in your deck. Very strong. Um, I'm going B because I think it's I think it's right there with like with like a, a Merfolk Branchwalker kind of level. <laughs> Ten-year-old me is getting amped about that art. Uh, next card is Frenzied Arnix. This is a common Arynx. I don't know how to pronounce that. Two red-green for a 3-3 three, three with Riot Trample, and it has four red-green. Frenzied Arynx gets plus three, plus zero until end of turn. Frenzied Hawkeye. This is an F. Frilled Mystic. Green-green, blue-blue, 3-2 Flash. When Frilled Mystic enters the battlefield, you may counter target spell. This card is great. I kind of wish it was a 2-2 so we could find it with with uh, with Militia Bugler. I wish it was a 2-2. Um, is this as good as Crackling Drake for like in standard? Probably not. I think Crackling Drake would be an A. I like I kind of like the A minus rating. With this one, this is a lizard wizard. Um, Simic colors does kind of make it worse because yeah, it's Simic. Who knows if it'll be that good? Um, with that, I'm gonna give this an A minus. No, B plus, B plus. We'll go B plus, B plus. That's what I'm gonna go with it because the mana cost is you know kind of tough, and then you know it's an easy body to kill. So it's you know, it's an expensive counter spell. Uh, for a four mana counter spell, you get a three two body, which is which is awesome. You can also just play the body even if there's nothing to counter. It's not a merfolk, that's true. Um, I'm going I'm going B plus. Uh, it's still a a real good card, uh, kind of card I like playing for sure. Galloping Lizrog. I don't like it. Lizrog. I think it's okay to have like Simic cards that are like frog lizard wizards or whatever, you know, like that's 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 fine. All these creature types. The name just being Lizrog, I don't I don't like Lizrogs. I don't like it. This is an F. Uh what it does, three green blue for a three three trample. When it ETBs, you may remove any number of one counters from among creatures you control to put them on and put twice that many on this. So yeah, you can make five mana really big creature if you want. That's not a standard card, that's an F. Next, get the point. Three black, red, instant, destroy target creature, scry one. This is also an F. Uh, removal in standard is amazing. Uh, it's good and limited, but we don't need this in standard. Also an F. Grasping thrall. Three white, black, Creature Thrall, 3-3, three, three, flying. When it enters the battlefield, it deals 2 damage to each opponent, and you gain 2 life. That is an F. We've spent some time on some cards, so, you know, I'm going, going quickly through the Fs. Frilled Mystic was a B+. Plus. All right, Growth Spiral. Wow, this card looks sweet. I think I only saw, like, a promo version of this card before or anything. I don't think I've seen this art. This art is awesome. Yeah, that art is great. Okay. Green, blue, instant. Draw a card. You may put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. 
Yeah, a lot of people are saying A in in chat, and I'm I'm completely agreeing with them. And Unbeard's got it got it right. This is A plus art, and this is an A as a card. This card is very good. And yeah, it's a common. Uh, putting an extra land from your hand on the battlefield in standard is very valuable. Like that kind of ramp in standard, very valuable. It replaces itself. Um, yeah, this is just an A. Uh, this is another, yeah, that's, that, the Turbo Fog deck, exactly what you want here. Um, and I'm, I'm not even convinced that Turbo Fog deck needs, needs fogs, but yeah, this is, that's a, that's a good card. It's a good card. So that's an A. Grow Spiral, A. Yeah, and it's any land. Right, not basic. So you get to put you get to put your shock land into play, you know, and not have to take the damage. You just put your shock land into play tapped. And and that's the other thing is it's not just always tapped though. If you, you can put lands into play untapped, so you can basically make it cost it's one mana for the grow spiral. Cause it's just put a land from your hand on the battlefield, not even tapped. So like later in the game, just like one mana. Anyway, Gruel Spellbreaker. Tons of people saying A in the chat. Let's see. We got one red green for a 3-3 three, three Riot Trample. As long as it's your turn, you and Gruel Spellbreaker have hex proof. I like it. This is a I am sold. It's definitely an A. I like it. This is this is an A as well. Uh 3 mana 3-3 three, three, haste trample. Give me that. Uh and it also has hexproof during your turn. Absolutely great curve filler. Um, this is uh, just a, a good spell breaker. I like it. I like it. So you think three mana four four trample hexproof seems C? Nah. Nah. Like when you have you have uh, like we have land war elves in this format. So you play land war elf. Your opponent, your opponent plays a shock land in. You're attacking them for three with the spellbreaker already. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Thanks, so, Oho. Yeah, I'm giving this an A also. Grow spiral, gruel spellbreaker, both A's. Uh, next up, uh, gyre engineer. That's gyre. Gyre. Maybe, I don't know. One blue green for a one one tap, add blue and green to your mana pool. I think this is gonna be an F. Geyer. Alright, Geyer Engineer. Um Yeah. That's just gonna be an F. We got so many better options in standard. Hackrobat. One black red, two three, that has spectacle for black and red. You may pay black to give it death touch, or you may pay red to give it plus two, minus two. Yeah, we've we've gone through the other colors so far. We're on multicolor. If you're just joining us, though, uh, the other colors are on my YouTube channel or or uh, going up on YouTube also. So make sure to follow along right over here, youtube.com slash C slash Totsi with SubTG. All right, so looking at the people in chat, a lot of people are pretty uh, high on this card, like a little higher than than what what I am. But <clears throat> here's a good comment: is with with enough good one drops, this is real. Yeah, if you can get this with the spectacle cost, if you just look at the spectacle cost, two mana, two three that does those is an amazing card. I think the problem is, uh, you know, getting it for that spectacle cost. Um, does gain death touch and you can pump it to be a four one i'm coming around i think y'all are y'all are kind of convincing me um is this all right think about boros what's <clears throat> what's the boros two mana two three from the last set with mentor it's like boros something or maybe it doesn't have boros at the beginning but the two two mana two three with mentor that had four mana where you could give it plus one plus one boros challenger is this card for just the spectacle cost is it even better is it 
better than Boros Challenger. If it's two mana, they're both two mana, two threes. The other one had Mentor to make your other things bigger, and it could pump. This has like the pump, and you can gain Death Touch. The Death Touch and pump is probably a little better. This one's probably, as just a pure two drop, this one's probably a little better, but not a lot better. Similar better. Boros Challenger is not bad. The card's actually fine. But I think this is a little better as a pure two drop. The thing is, is it's not a pure two drop. There's going to be a lot of times where this is three. At three mana, this is not playable. The only way this is playable is, is with Spectacle. I'm going to go ahead and give this card a D. I think that this may see a little bit of play, but I don't think this is very good. Yeah, green is not uploaded to YouTube yet. It it is it is currently ready to be uploaded. I just have to type all the stuff in with it. Uh, what what was I? Which part was I? What part do you think I was wrong about with that? Yeah, so I'm gonna go with D with Hackerbat. All right, high alert. Uh, one white blue for an enchantment. Each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. Creatures you control can attack as though they didn't have defender. And you can spend two white and a blue to untap target creature. And this is the Arcades deck. Like we talked about, this is D. Um, so this is, yeah, this is definitely a D. This is what we've been talking about the Arcades deck. It's exactly what it wanted. So, yeah, that could be... Uh, you know, a fringe deck, and this is the build around. It doesn't go in anything else, but it gets, but it has that. Hydroid Crasis, Crassus. We have X blue green for a zero zero, but when you cast the spell, you gain half X life and draw half X cards round down each time. It's flying trample and it enters the battlefield with X one one counters on it. Ooh, this card. Um, whenever people saw this card immediately, there's a lot of people going crazy over it. I'm not so sure. All right, so let's say, all right, let's 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 start with for four mana. For four mana with two green blue, you get a two, two flying trample where you draw one card and gain one life. The two, two flying trample gain a life draw a card and yeah and the, and you, you you get to gain a life draw a card as a cast trigger so you're, you get to make sure you do that i don't even know if that's a good card i don't think that's a good card um we've seen four mana etv draw a card gain a life for just a 2-2 flyer that's not a good card that doesn't see any play so you you we got to go bigger than that um and we're rounding down so you gotta let's we, we gotta go to six because like five mana we're rounding down for the cards so for six mana four green green blue we're getting a four four where we gain two life draw two cards hmm that's a that's a probably or a maybe yeah that's like cloud blazer kind of that's actually probably still a no is that that good so like cloud blazer was gain two life draw two cards right and that cost five that was a smaller body a three two this would be a four four and cost six um so five mana three three flying trample draw two gain two seems play but you won't draw two gain two you round down so you draw one gain one if you if it's five mana yeah, Cloud Blazer is only good with Monument. Um, so, so at that point at six, it's it's okay. Um, you know, I think, I mean, I think I prefer Dream Eater to that of having Flash, and having Surveil for, and having the ability to bounce a permanent at Flash speed. I think Dream Eater is a better card than this at six mana than than the draw two gain two. Um, yeah, the draw effect can't be countered, which is true, but I think I'm not, I, I don't think this is really better than Dream Eater at that point. So I think you really need to be going big. I think for Hydroid Crassus, 
you need to be going even bigger than six. I think you need to kind of reliably going like eight, 10 mana with this kind of thing. Uh, this is the kind of thing that you're going to want to be able to uh, really ramp into. And, and people are talking about how there is a lot of good green ramp cards. We talked about Growth Spiral earlier, and there's other good ramp cards. So you're going to have to, you're going to really want to play this in a, in a ramp deck uh, for this. Um, and Real Rank says this card is amazing, and I'll be on the bandwagon very quick after release. Could be. I could be underrating this. This is certainly a card that could be underrating, but I think I'm giving this card a C. I think it's really good in ramp archetype. I don't think it's very good anywhere else. It is a cast trigger. So, um, but yeah, I think I think at six mana, it's a it's. I think at four mana, it's not good. At six mana, but like sometimes you may have to just play it at four mana because you have to. The thing that's good about it is it's all of those cards put together. You get to choose like when you you cast it, even if it, it's it's not like it's it's fixed in where it's always the four mana card and um or or always the six mana version you know you you get to kind of choose if you're kind of stuck on lands you need to play play it for four mana you can so it's not just like hey this has to be an eight mana card to make it worth it kind of thing um you know you do have the flexibility flexibility is really important with magic because games don't always play out perfectly and so it's good to have options basically it's good to have options so um yeah, I think it's worse than Palaka Worm in the Team or Ramp deck, probably. But it could go alongside it, maybe. Um, yeah, the trigger on cast is definitely good. Uh, for sure. Yep, the trigger on, on cast is good. But yeah, the, the flexibility and the cast trigger are upsides. Those are the upsides. It's a small creature for how much you have to pay, but it does have Flying Trample. I don't know. I'm giving it a C. Um, I think it'll be... Uh, it could be an important card... I think it's like an important card in like a single archetype in like a ramp deck, uh, maybe. Um, but yeah, so that's that's why I'm going with this card. All right, let's go on. We still got a lot of cards to go. Imperious Oligarch, white and a black for a two-one vigilance with afterlife one. So. You know, this is the kind of card that would that would work in a Mardu Aristocrats type deck with Judith. Um, I'm not, you know, like I think I'm going to go ahead and give this card like a a C minus or a, a D plus, D plus. Yeah, I think it's I think yeah, D plus. I think it's it's kind of good in that kind of archetype. It's not really you'll never play it anywhere else. Um, and honestly, there may be better cards than it overall. Uh, so going going D plus with it. Honestly, just D. Actually, it's like kind of like gutter snipe level. Yeah, actually, this is just D. It could could see some play in like the one archetype. Um, but yeah, even like hunted witness would much rather have hunted witness by a mile. So yeah, let's, I'm going D. Yeah, two one vigilance. The one toughness vigilance. Don't love it. Yeah. Hunted Witness is a lot better. So, yeah. Go in D. Judith the Sc Scourge Diva. Is that right? Scourge? Scourge? Scourge. Scourge? That sounds right. One black, red, legendary creature. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus zero. Uh, this is a 2-2. Two -two. Scourge? Scourge Diva. Okay, Judith the Scourge Diva. So it's three mana, two, two, for one B one BR. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus zero. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, Judith the Scourge Diva deals one damage to any target. This card is incredible. This is absolutely one of the best cards in the set. It, if it, the three mana being legend is what's kind of keeping it from being an A+. I'm certainly giving it at least an A. Uh, maybe a, this may be, I haven't given A plus to anything else in the set. This could be an A plus. Um, it does work with its own death, yes. And I think the only reason why it's not an A plus is because you can't just play one and then play another because they're legendary kind of thing. It is 
absolutely amazing in Rakdos decks. This is this is going to be a defining card in in the in the set. Um, this will absolutely be a defining card, and the two toughness means that like this is you know you're still going to be playing four of this card even though it's a legend because this is going to have such a target on its head. Borderin with the sub saying thanks for your content. Really looking forward to the new brews with the new set. Me too, Borderin. Can't wait. Um, yeah, if you do just want to play the second one out, you can just turn the second one into like two damage upstairs. Yeah, you can certainly do that. Um, yep. Yeah. But yeah, this is like this is going to be what Rakdos Aggro is kind of built on. Um, basically, every Rakdos deck, all the, the Mardu Aristocrat decks are just built on this card. You just have like your your crabby creatures. The you get to pump them up, and whenever any of them die, you deal a damage to a t any target, which is so much better than just dealing damage just upstairs. You get to choose the target for for your triggers there, um, which we've seen with like Niv Mizzet. Choosing your your target for like those triggers are, are really good. Um, this card is insane. Uh, I kind of want to go A plus. I th I think this is this may be. I think it's it's probably like this is certainly one of the very best cards in the set. I don't know if it's the very best. It could be the very best. Um, yeah, I think this is an A plus actually. If I, History Benali is an A plus. History Benali to Fairy Niv Mizzet. I think this is probably around that level. Um, yeah, it's it's right up there. Um, yeah, I'll, it's, yeah, maybe A. It's 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 real close there. So this card's great. Um, yeah, I think that's solid A. Solid A, bordering on A plus, but I think I think solid A. I think this is just a, a solid A. This is this is going to be a a card that you're going to see a lot of. That's going to just make the the Rakdos decks, makes the Aristocrat decks, all that kind of stuff. Um, I think a common pro tour commentary quote will be he got Judith. Okay, yep, move on. Very good. Kaya Orzov Usurp Usurper. One white black legendary planeswalker. Kaya for three. So you get three loyalty, three mana planeswalker again. Plus one exile up to two target cards from a single graveyard. You gain two life if at least one creature card was exiled this way. So. The, so for the tick up, you get to just exile a couple cards from a graveyard, and then if you exile a creature, you gain two life. So the tick up is not exactly a reliable gain two life, but it's gain two life sometimes, and you exile some cards from a graveyard. The minus one is exile a non-land permanent with CMC one or less, so only things with one or less, so like land or elf and some aggro things. I don't know. And then minus five... Uh, Kaya deals damage to target player equal to the number of cards that player owns in exile. This is the most disappointing card in the set by miles and miles by, for me. We haven't really had good white-black planeswalkers in a long time. I was really looking forward to Kaya. I was really hoping Kaya was going to be good. I was really looking forward to it. This card's just not good. This is just... I don't know if I want to go F, but like, like D... I I don't think this is better than Dovin. I think Dovin's better. I, I'm going to go D with Kaya. It's it's unfortunate. I'm going to go D, but I'm really sad about that. Kaya's Wrath. White, white, black, black. For destroy all creatures, you gain life equal to the number of creatures you controlled that were destroyed this way. So Tom, so somebody said it about Kaya in chat. A lot of people have been saying that Kaya could break out with the number of exile effects and black and white, and the ult could be massive. Highly doubt it, but I guess that's a possible, but highly doubt it. All right, so Kaya's wrath. Uh, I think this is just an A. Yeah, this is just this is just an A. This is just a really good card. It does have like the. Or maybe an A minus because the the mana cost, but honestly, white white black black isn't going to be that difficult with how good mana bases will be with ten shocks and ten uh, buddy lands. I think I'm going to go A minus with it just because of the mana cost. Uh, but yeah, four mana wrath 
is is just awesome. I'm gonna have so many of my creatures die die to this card all the time. Uh, the life gain probably won't happen too much in those kind of decks, but even like, a, like this is a sideboard card for aristocrat decks too. Like uh, like Judith aristocrat decks. Um, so maybe it's an A because even like these these decks here that you're playing like a lot of crappy creatures, you play against like some green deck that has like a lot of bigger creatures. You're going to destroy the creatures. You gain a lot of life. You get a lot of triggers with your Judith kind of thing. You get your afterlife effects. Yeah. Um, I, I actually let's go A. So yeah, it actually works really well with that too. Let's go A with this. Um, Kaya's Wrath, real strong. So how in A, with all the white and black sweepers in standard, why would you play this over any of them in a control deck? Because this actually destroys all the, the creatures in, uh, like, the black sweepers don't destroy all the creatures. They only destroy or exile certain, like, you know, they're, they're conditional. This is not conditional, just destroys all creatures. With Cleansing Nova, this just costs one less. Like, four mana is a lot cheaper than, than three mana, or than five mana. So, yeah. It's, it's really good. It's an A. All right, Knight of the Last Breath. Five white black for a 4-4 four, four giant knight. <laughs> That's kind of crazy, a giant knight. Uh, it has afterlife three, and you can pay three, sacrifice another non-token creature, and create a 1-1 one, one spirit. Yeah, this is just an F for standard, uh, but it's probably a great and limited F for standard. Lavinia, white and a blue for a legendary creature. I There's not nearly as many legendary creatures as I would hope. There's not very many, and I don't like it. I want to be playing my legendary sorcery decks, as y'all know. I was wishing there's more legendary cards in this. All right, Lavinia. So it's two mana, two two. Each opponent can't cast non-creature spells with converted mana cost greater than the number of lands that player controls. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast it, counter that spell. All right. So the second part doesn't really matter for. Well, it does matter for standard. Electro Dominance, we've talked about how Electro Dominance deals like X damage and then you cast the spell. If you have Lavinia in play, you counter that spell. So you have to like Electro Dominance kill the Lavinia, I suppose. I guess the Electro Dominance will just kill the Lavinia always and then put something into play. So I guess that that's something. But then, yeah, um, Lavinia is really good against the Wilderness Reclamation Nexus of Fate deck, right? If they... Uh, if they don't have seven lands yet, if they're trying to untap their, their mana and cast their seven mana cards like Nexus of Fate with Wilderness Reclamation before they have seven mana, they can't. Um, yeah, stop the Teferi trick for it too. Um, yeah, she would leave before you cast the Electrodominance card, yes. Uh, so, yeah, great against creature ramp decks, right? Card decks with non they're trying to cast non-creature spells with creature mana but is there really going to be like the blue white aggro decks though like is that really going to be a thing i'm going to give this a c i think lavinia um you know we'll see some amount of play in the format kind of thing i think this is a, a c what do you think i said wrong there eternal misery I said that she would stop the non-creature spells that you're trying to use with your creature mana if you, if it costs more than how many lands you have. That's what I said. So, I don't know what you think I, I missed there. You know, like if you're trying to play like a, a, a big bane fire for more mana than you have or whatever, or, you know, trying to use your land war elf to ramp into non-creature spells that cost more than how many lands you have, you can't play it. Yeah, it's... Good against Convoke, too. Um, yeah, if you're, if you're, so you'd have to, like, you wouldn't be able to march for more than how many lands you have with that. Well, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't counter Banefire. It just, you can't cast the Banefire for, for that much, I was saying. But yeah. Yeah, if only that counted creature spells also, but it's only the non-creature spells. I think Lavinia is a solid C. Okay, Law Mage's Binding. One white, blue, flash, enchant creature. Uh, enchant creature can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. 
pretty good for limited. We just have a lot better things for standard. Um, so this is going to be not a card I see seeing too much play. Uh, Lord Cashcroft with the sub. Thank you so much for the sub there. That's sub number 10. So that means we got into our second sub goal. So that means we're getting another pack of Ravnica Allegiance whenever that gets here. So now we are at, we are two back packs in. Each five subs, I am marking it down for another pack. We're going to be bust, buying a bunch of packs of Ravnica Allegiance on the 17th for the next six days of streaming. Adding them up. Thanks, Lord Cashcroft. All right, yeah, I think this is just a nap, right? Reverium. Also getting in on the hype there. So number 11. All right, so one white, blue, flash, enchant creature. Enchant creature can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. So we're looking at three mana removal. Um, instant speed removal for three mana. Like, wouldn't you just rather have, like, seal away kind of thing um yeah please read emergency powers todd for for what how are we casting nexus with it we're not casting nexus with emergency powers emergency powers puts permanence into play i was saying those kind of what I was saying with Lavinia is you cannot cast Emergency Powers or Nexus of Fate if you don't have seven mana or seven lands. That's what I was saying. Macabre Mockery is two black and a red for an instant. Put target creature card from an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It gets plus two, plus zero, and gains haste until end of turn. Sacrifice it until the beginning of... Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. All right, so you're you're spending four mana to get a creature from your opponent's graveyard for just one turn. So it's you know we've seen like Act of Treason is like stealing an opponent's creature. Um, then uh, this is just getting a creature from a graveyard. We're not taking it from the opponent's battlefield. I think this is just it is an instant, so you you can take something and block. Um, it does make for combat silliness, but I don't see this seeing any standard play though. I'm st I'm still going with an F. Um, it could be kind of cool if like a an e like you take a ravenous chupacabra kind of thing. I think you'd probably just play a different card. I'm going with the F for that. Um, yeah, you could respond to an eldritch reborn with that. It's not worth it. Just have just have a card that like kills the eldritch reborn or something. Yeah, you could steal their Elisha Born target only if it's the, only if they're targeting something from their own graveyard, only if they're not targeting something from your graveyard, and you only get it until en the end step. All right, Mortify. One white and a black, destroy target creature or enchantment. That is huge. The or enchantment in this uh, in this format with um, with. Uh, like the amount of really good enchantments in this format, that is huge. So uh, I don't think this is an, I don't know if this is an A, because you're still looking at like the two color combination and it's still three mana destroy a creature. But then that, that enchantment part is is awesome. Um, I think I'm going to go with the B plus here uh, for Mortify. Um, yeah, I think this is like better than a lightning strike type card. Um, yeah, there's lots of good enchantments. You get to destroy a creature. Yeah, awesome. I'm going B+. Plus. Hit A for Abzan. <laughs> All right, Nikia of the Old Ways. I think it's better than Assassin's Trophy by quite a bit. I think Assassin's Trophy's downfall of giving your opponent a land is huge in Standard. I think that that's a really, really big downfall in Standard. So I think I think I would like Mortify more than Assassin's Trophy. Um, Nikki of the Old Ways is three red and a green for a five-five. You can't cast non-creature spells, um, and whenever you tap a land for mana, add one mana of any type that land produced. 
I'm going to go ahead and go with a D with this uh, because, you know, this is kind of like a build around type card, but I'm not a big fan of this card. You know, so you get to have two mana for every land. That's awesome. But the problem is, is whenever you have lots of mana, usually what you want to use lots of mana on are non-creature spells. You know, you're thinking of big X spells, um, things like Explosion, Banefire, Electro Dominance, all these kind of cool things. But you can't cast non-creature spells. There's not very many good creatures to cast. You have Zakama, which is a good one. You have you have the Hydro Crisis thing that we talked about earlier. Hydro Crisis is probably the, the big thing you want to cast with this. But the fact that you just can't cast non-creature spells at all is really can be really, really backbreaking. You know, like you have like a Domri in your hand with this. You can't cast it at all. It's not like um, Null Hide where you can just pay an extra two to get rid of that if you want to still use that. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go with a D with this. You need to build around it, but um, this should not... I, not too excited about that of just not being able to cast non-creature spells at all so d pitiless pontiff white and a black for a 2-2 vampire cleric pay one sacrifice another creature pitiless pontiff gains death touch and indestructible end until end of turn this is crucial for the aristocrat deck uh being able to sacrifice stuff this is awesome with judith that we had earlier um, and it gains indestructible, so you don't have to worry. Like, they try killing your Pontiff, you get to get to save it. This is the exact card that the Aristocrat deck wants. It's amazing there. This is a B for me. A defining card in a single highly played archetype. I think Aristocrat uh, archetype will be highly played, and this is, the defi- this is a defining card for it. Doesn't really go in any other deck, no. But I think this is the just a solid B, the exact, like, what a B is. It's perfect. The Timmy in you is sad right now. Why, Gatsby? Because you wanted Nikia to work? Yeah, Death Touch and Indestructible are great abilities. Those those two together work so well. All right. Single archetype build around card right here. Prime Speaker Vanifar. Well, so so Seiko, the, the single archetype build around card... If it's if it's very fringe, it's D. If it's like a highly played archetype, it's B kind of thing. All right, Prime Speaker Speaker Vanifar, two green and a blue for a two four. Tap, sacrifice another creature. Search your library for a converted mana cost with converted mana cost equal to one plus the sacrifice creature's converted mana cost. Put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery. So one one problem with this with this pod, you know, like this is this is the new birthing pod, right? One problem, birthing pod could get anything like one mana or like up to like one plus or less, right? This can only get one mana more, right? Couldn't pod get anything else? I think pod could not. Pod could only get one mana more, also, because this you know you can't get you can't like sack a four drop and get a four drop. Was Pod that way also? Was Pod like always you had to sack? Pod was always just plus one also? Okay. Okay, so never mind. So that, so never mind. So Pod was exactly one way. Okay, so it's the same wording. Okay, so same wording as Pod. All right, anyway, of course you do have to, all right, so this is a creature. It's a 2-4. You do have to untap with it to be able to start using. But it's certainly uh, what I want to, to, uh, to play. This is certainly a really fun card. I want to play a lot of creatures with ETB effects. This is something you can find with Militia Bugler also. Get this thing into play. Um, if you can play this with Domri, you can give it Riot, give it Haste. Um, and uh, that looks like that's like something that would be quite fun. Um, yeah, so this is, this is really cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give this card, I think, a C. I think it's it's not only you can build like a, a fringe archetype around it, but you can also just kind of put this in some some different decks. I think you can just kind of build like multiple different Prime Speaker Vanifer decks. I don't think you, there's only just like one Prime Speaker Vanifer deck you, you can build. I think you can just build multiple different fringe archetypes around this. Um, I think I'm going to go with a, a C for, for this, for for Prime Speaker Vanifer, and I, I certainly want to play that card. 
that's always good when there's cards that you want to play. And yeah, Bant, Bant Legends. Whew. It's a legend. Do you like me some legends? All right, Rafter Demon. Two black, red for a 4-2. And it also has Spectacle for three black and a red. When Rafter Demon enters the battlefield, if the Spectacle cost was paid, each opponent discards a card. That's the definition of an F. Rakdos Firewheeler. Black, black, red, red for a 4-3. When Rakdos Fire, Firewheeler enters the battlefield, it deals 2 damage to target opponent and 2 damage to up to 1 target creature or planeswalker. It just seems so much worse than like Ravenous Chupacabra, right? Like you, you just don't you don't always kill the thing. Like sure you get to deal 2 damage to the opponent and you can just 2 damage to them. A lot of people are saying like C in the chat here. I'm thinking more like D. I, I think it's going to be I don't think this card will see much play, though. It does have a way better body. I'm not seeing this card really see him play, honestly. I'm going to go, yeah, D, D minus, maybe. I, I don't, I would be surprised if that sees play. Could just be an F, honestly. <laughs> Thanks, EOD guy. Yeah, I, I could just see F with Fire Wheeler. Um,. I want to kind of be nice to those XXYY CMC cost cards, but honestly, it's probably just F. Rakdos Roustabout. One black and a red for a 3-2. When Rakdos Roustabout becomes blocked, it deals one damage to the, to the player or planeswalker it's attacking. That is an F. Rakdos the Showstopper. Four black red for a 6-6 six, six flying trample. When Rakdos, the showstopper, enters the battlefield, flip a coin. For each creature that isn't a demon, devil, or imp, destroy each creature whose coin comes up tails. Whew, this is a fun card. Um, yeah, it's okay to scoop in paper, absolutely. Uh, yeah, this is a fun card. But yeah, this is this is a... Okay, one, this isn't going to see very, very much play. A plus for flavor, uh, F for fun, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. Cool card, not very good. Uh, if we think about, like, the, there's already, uh, like, Demon Lord Belzenlock, that's, that's six mana, six, six flying, I think Bel Demon Lord Belzenlock has trample, um, like that, like how it like redraws cards. I think that that's kind of like, uh, may, I don't, you know, debatable if it's better or not, but it's a very similar kind of effect. Um, and, you know, like that card sees no play, basically. Uh, yeah, Doom Whisper costing one, one less mana. You get to surveil a bunch. Um, I mean, I think this this card is is basically just a D for me. It'll see a little bit of play. Some people will, will kind of put it in the, in you know random, whatever ramp deck or random decks kind of thing. But uh, but this this is definitely just a D for me. But it's it'll it's definitely a lot of fun. Just like the other Rakdos Mythic, I'm kind of excited to play this card for sure. Uh, but yeah, limited Mythic Bomb for sure. Yeah, kind of like Tetsamok. I think this is a worse card than Tetsamok. Like Tetsamok, I would rather have Tetsamok in my deck than Rakdos, the Showstopper, for the most part. Um, but yeah, it is it is kind of good with Judith in play, where you get some get some triggers as well, kind of thing. <laughs> Grixis start quasi duplicating this thing. Um, yeah, it's yeah. Was, this is a disappointing kind of card for you know Rakdos. Like the the entire guild is named after this card. And this creature, and yeah. The next card needs pizza, Ravager Worm. So go in D with Rakdos, the showstopper. Maybe D plus. D plus. D plus to C minus, actually, with Rakdos, the showstopper. We're actually kind of looking at, looking at the ratings a little bit, actually. No, D plus to C minus with Rakdos the Showstopper. It'll see a little bit of play, but it's not that good. Ravager Worm. Three, this is a, another mythic. Three red, green, green. 
For a 4-5 with Riot, and it enters the battlefield, you choose one. It bites target creature you don't control, or you destroy target land with an activated ability that isn't a mana ability. This card's pretty good. This card's pretty good. So, like, you know, it's basically Ravenous Jupacabra, like, where how you can have it ETB and fight a creature and have it kill the creature. Now, obviously, if they use the removal spell in response to the Ravager Worm, like, in response to, like, the fight thing, it's not, you know, you, you won't be able to actually kill the thing. But it's very big. It has haste. It doesn't really get through things. Like, if you're playing against, like, the Aristocrat deck um, and, you know, somebody has... I don't know, this thing out that can just gain indestruct death touch and indestructible. Can't really get through that. But you can destroy like an Escanta that's flipped or a treasure like the treasure cove after that's that's flipped and everything like that. Um you know, of course it's a lot of people talked about how it Domri curves into this really well kind of thing. I think this is a C. I think they'll see see a little bit of play. Um but six mana creatures you know, like Six mana creatures in standard. We're talking about Niv Mizzet and Carnage Tyrant as like our six mana defining creatures. I'm not sure like we want this over Niv Mizzet Carnage Tyrant kind of thing. So I'm gonna go with the C. Yeah, that's that's where I'm at on Ravager Worm. It can kill Detection Tower. That's a good point to help your Carnage Tyrant. But yeah, you can make it a 5-6 and have it fight Lyra Dawnbringer, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it it's not a bad card, but it, just 6 mana, that's a lot of mana. But it's not a bad card. Up next, Rhythm of the Wild. This is an uncommon. One red, green. Creature spells you control can't be ca countered. Non-token creatures you control have Riot. We've got S plus, a lot of A's, A pluses, B amazing sideboard hate. So Rhythm of the Wild is really good. I like this card as a lot of other people do. Um, so the creature spells you control can't be countered is, you know, only only good against, obviously, counter spell decks. It is very good good there, but that's not a very large percentage of archetypes. Right, so so while the first part of the, the card has some benefits in a small amount of games, it's not going to do a whole lot. It's not like the reason to pay three mana for a card, really. Um, it's like you know, like a side. It's like that's like a, a reasonable thing to have for sideboarding. The other part, your creature, all your creatures have riot. Now that is awesome. So all your creatures basically have haste, or you can put extra one one counters on them. All Riot is really good. Um, so, yeah. So this this could be countered also. So you have to have Rhythm of the Wild resolved. That's a good point. In order for your creature spells to not be countered. You'd have to need need this to be to resolve. So is all your creatures getting, getting haste worth an A? I don't think this is worth an A. Um, this is the kind of card... Well... Yeah, I don't think it's worth an A. I think it's I think it's really good, but I'm more towards like a, a B plus to A minus kind of thing for Rhythm of the Wild. Um, against aggro decks, when you're playing aggro decks, you're not going to want to draw Rhythm of the Wild. Rhythm of the Wild is going to be really bad against aggro decks because you're you have to like take your three your like a, a turn off to play a spell that only gives your creatures haste, but you're going to be behind, so you don't really want your creatures to have haste. Well, I guess the or give your creatures a plus one plus one counter then in that in that uh, scenario. Um, and I do think that the Rakdos decks are pretty good and the format's going to be kind of fast. And so there's a there's a good amount of the format where you don't really want Rhythm of the Wild in your deck. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and give this plus, or I'm going to give this a B plus. I think that's where I'm at with Rhythm of the Wild. But yeah, you would give your creatures plus one, plus one. But it's, it's a card you're definitely sideboarding out in those those kind of matchups. Um, does a creature you control mean something different than creatures you cast? So creatures you control mean mean uh, creatures that are on the, the battlefield uh, already for you. So creatures you cast are, car are creatures you're playing from your hand and they're on the stack. And once, once a creature you cast resolves, then it enters the battlefield and becomes a creature you control. 
So I'm gonna go B plus with Rhythm of the Wild. Lots of people are saying A though. A lot of people are saying A plus, A minus. Maybe I'm a little off on this card. Um, Fires of Yavimaya was a standard staple, but I also think standard was not as good when Fires of Yavimaya was in play than it is now. Just you know, just just cards in general. You know, I think you know power creep kind of thing. I think cards are kind of better now. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm going B plus, but you know maybe maybe I'm a little low on that. Rubber Belt Runner one red green three three can't be blocked by creature tokens. Yep, that's a that's an F. Savage Smash one red green sorcery target creature you control gets plus two plus two until end turn and it fights a creature you don't control. All right, earlier I think we said we had like the best fight spell. I think this is now like the best fight spell. This is a decent fight spell. Put it on a death touch creature. Mm, no, first, yeah. It is sorcery. And it's three mana. Yeah, it's it's just F. It's just F. I was trying to think of like some way to give it like a D, maybe. But it's an F. Uh, Senate Guild Mage, white and a blue for a 2-2. Two -two. You can either pay a white and tap it and gain two life, or pay a blue and tap it and then draw a card and discard a card. So it's, it's you know, it's a looter. You know, it's a two-mana looter, where but you have to pay a mana to loot. Um, looters have been good before, but not not necessarily standard. But then you got to pay a mana. Um, hmm. I think I think we're gonna go ahead and I mean, this is either a D or an F, right? I, I we're just gonna go ahead and give it an F. F plus. There you go. I still I think the the Simic Guild Mage is the best of the Guild Mages. I think it's the closest one to being playable. All right, Seraph of the Scales, two white black flying, and it's a it's a flying four three, so four mana four three flying, where you can pay white to give it vigilance or black to give it death touch until end of turn, and it has afterlife too. This card's kind of weird to me. Um, I don't think this is that great. Like the like four mana, four three flying. That's not like just that's not that good in standard. We've kind of talked about that before with like the the Sphinx. Like that's not good enough for standard. And it has the ability to maybe gain vigilance or maybe gain death touch. Like if we're kind of thinking about thinking about like Shalai being like the three four that gives you all your stuff hex proof. Like I'd much rather have Shalai. But this does have Afterlife 2. So does Afterlife 2 mean so much that you turn a card that's kind of similar to like Shalai, that's like a rare, turn it into a mythic? Yeah, yeah, this could just honestly just have Vigilance and Death Touch in general. I don't think you'd, yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think this, this card would be too good at all if it didn't even require you to spend any mana just to gain Vigilance and Death Touch. This art, though, is A+. Plus. The art is amazing. The thing is, it's like, if Afterlife 2 is, like, so much Afterlife that it turns this card into Mythic, that's what I was thinking, like, why do we really need to have a number on Afterlife kind of thing? Um, Shalai is a legend. That's true. This is not a legend. That's true. That's that's something to, to note. <laughs> this is not an F. This card's okay, but it's not... It's not amazing. I think this is like a I'm going to I think this is like a a B B minus. Uh this angel subtype does matter. The angel subtype on this is certainly a benefit. Um I think it would be worse if it didn't have the angel subtype. I'm thinking like a a B minus. Do I think this is going to be a standard staple? Uh, maybe not. Yeah, I'm going B minus. Yeah, I could could be talked into C plus also. Yeah, actually, I could be talked into C plus. C's a re some a regular amount of play in the format is an important card. Important card in like a black white angel deck. Actually, I could be talked into a C. <laughs> it's kind of just like only just black white angels. You you can't play this like basically anywhere else. I don't think this will really see much play anywhere else. 
Uh, could this be played in like a Mardu Aristocrat decks because of the Afterlife 2 as like a finisher? Are you putting it in there? Potentially, maybe. All right, C+. Plus. Yeah, Hawkeye the Showstopper. All right, C+. Plus. Shark to Crab. I hate this card. Like how we talked about before, I just, I don't like how there's just like names that are just like Shark to Crab. Like that's just like a, a name for like the playtest group before they get an actual name. Like that's just not, that's just not a name of a card. Um, yeah, so two green, blue for a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, and then it has two green and a blue for adapt one. Whenever one or more 1-1 one, one counters are put on Shark to Crab, tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. Uh, yeah, the art's pretty cool. Um, I, I wish this just had, like, a cool name, like like an actual, like, name, you know, not just Shark to Crab. You know, I just wish it had, a, a, like, an actual name. But anyway, the card's an F for standard, of course. It's going to be good in limited. Four mana, four, four in limited. Like, with a dat, you know, that's a good limited card. But, you know, standard, that's an F. All right, Simic Ascendancy. Green, this is a rare. Um, this is... Uh, a rare enchantment. One green, blue. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. So you can spend three mana to put a counter on one of your creatures. And then whenever one or more 1-1 one, one counters are put on a creature you control, put that many growth counters on Simic Ascendancy. At the beginning of your upkeep, if Simic Ascendancy has 20 or more growth counters, you win the game. All right. So, yeah, this is, yeah, this is just – this is like a, a Lich's Mastery type card. This is going to be a D. Um yeah, like you just really have to build around this to make your own janky deck. And, and that, you know, you can't even build around this to make like a good competitive deck. You're just going to build around this to make a a, a janky deck. Um, Hadana's, Hadana's Climb just wins the game by itself. It doesn't need Simic Ascendancy at all. But yeah. All right, uh... Sphinx of the New Prov is white, white, blue, blue for a 4-3 Flying Vigilance and spells your opponent's cast to target Sphinx of the New Prov costs two more to cast. Yep, this is an F. That is an F. Sphinx's Insight. Two white, blue, draw two cards. If you cast this during your main phase, you gain two life. I don't think you're really ever playing this over Chemist's Insight, right? Like, not having, yeah, all the things that can do. I think this is just another F. Um, yeah, I think that's just another F. Great art, though. Yeah, great art. Sunder Shaman. Red, red, green, green for a 5-5. Five, five. Four mana, 5-5. Five, five. That's a good rate. Can't be blocked by more than one creature. Okay, that's kind of cool. Deals com Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, destroy target artifact or enchantment that player controls. Maybe a D? Destroying enchantments, that's something I'm all about with this format. I'm thinking this is a D. I think I think this could see a little bit of play, but overall you're gonna be playing a lot better cards. Like overall, like you're probably just playing Reclamation Sage or Thrashing Brontodon or things like that. But you know. I think you're just playing those other cards instead. I'll just go ahead and give it a D though. Yeah, A is good, F is bad, kind of thing. Uh, Syndicate Guild Mage is up next. White, black for a 2-2. Two, two. Two uh, one in a white, tap it, tap target creature with power 4 or greater. 4 in a black, tap it, deals 2 damage to target opponent or a planeswalker. This is an F. Not, play not playable. All right, Tasa Karlov. Two white black for a legendary creature. It's a two four. If a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. That sounds great with Judith. That sounds real great with Judith. Creatures token creature tokens you control have vigilance and lifelink. 
yeah so this is this is a course yeah it's awesome with afterlife it's great with judith um i think this is i think this is another b i think this is a defining card in a single highly played archetype i think it's you know great in the deck with the other uh black white creature that we rated as a b earlier uh pitiless pontiff you know the, so i think this is just i think it's a i think this is a b um but yeah, I love the archetype. Yeah, it's it's great. All right, Mascalar, have a good night. Um, oh yeah, Marty's gonna be sick. I'm 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 saying Judith is like the best card in the set, or like if not like top two or three. Judith is amazing. So yeah, I I think yeah, I'm really really looking forward to Mardu here. And so yeah, Tesa, solid B. That's it's a great card there. Theater of Horrors. One black red enchantment. I forgot. We haven't got to this card yet. Yeah, Midnight Reaper also. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library. During your turn, if an opponent lost life this turn, you may play cards exiled with Theater of Horrors. And three in a red Theater of Horrors deals one damage to target opponent or Planeswalker. I completely agree with all the people in chat saying A. This is definitely an A. This card is great. So each turn you exile a card, you exile that card face up. Um, and you keep that card exiled with Theater of Horrors. And then during your turn, if, if your opponent lost life, then you can play those cards. It's pretty easy for a Rakdos deck to make your opponent lose life, right? The thing is, is it's not, you don't exile those top cards until end of turn. You keep those cards exiled, like, just for good. And you just can wait, and whenever your opponent loses life, then you can play those cards, and you can play them. So that means lands. You can play lands with this. You can play the extra cards. Um, it works great with uh, with Experimental Frenzy too, because you know you're not playing things from your fran from your hand with Experimental Frenzy. You know, so you have you can have like Theater Horrors and Frenzy go together and really go through a lot of cards in your library. Um, it's awesome. Uh, this card is great. This card is an A. Uh, yeah this i'm and it's only three mana for this effect wow yeah the opponent sees the exile cards yep yep yeah so you you know you it's basically like making like a second hand kind of uh so yeah you can have um so like all of like the cheap just just want to play a lot of cheap one in one and maybe two mana spells in Rakdos, and then just play like four theater horror, four experimental frenzy, and go through the library, and it's going to be sweet. Yeah, Mass, you can see the replays on YouTube. The other videos are up except uh, green. I'm about to put green up whenever we finish with this. But there you go. So you can you can go back and watch those after this. Yeah, and you can also play lands with that with theater of horrors. So. You can make so you, you can make that that so that's what I'm saying like theater of horrors with experimental frenzy you can make it jund so you can play whatever that other enchantment is that we talked about earlier this cinder vines if you want this thing on there too if you want to splash for this card but then you can also splash for um, uh, the three mana five five creature that allows you to play multiple lands a turn because you're going to see th so many cards in your deck and so you can just be able to play multiple lands a turn also yeah you're welcome ass so it's just if you've dealt so theater of horrors is if you're if your opponent has lost life this turn you can play any cards you've exiled with theater of horrors you only do exile one card a turn with it so it's only one extra card a turn if you're dealing damage each turn you're only getting one extra card with theater of horrors um but uh, if you if you play it and and you just kind of exile a card for a few turns in a row and then suddenly you deal damage, then you can like play all those cards that you exiled. Um, yeah, yeah, and it's and it's only during your turn, of course, with that too. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely sorcery speed. So theater of horrors A. All right, Zagana. What does Judith do? Yeah, somebody was asking about Judith earlier also. that Judith is amazing. Judith is... This was an A... Closest to the A plus... Closest to an A plus in the set. Uh, that's what it does. One black, red, two, two. Your other creatures get plus one, plus zero. And whenever a non-token creature you control dies, Judith deals one damage to any target. 
any target. But yeah, you can you'll be able to go back and watch that if you want to hear more about that. We spent spent a good amount of time on it though. I want to keep on going on here. This video's been a, been taking a while. All right, Zagana, Utopian Speaker, two green, blue for a 4-4. Four, four. So we're looking at a four mana 4-4. Four, four. When Zagana, Utopian Speaker, enters the battlefield, if you control another creature with a 1-1 counter on it, draw a card. So basically, for Zagana to be good, you certainly need another creature with a 1-1 counter on it. Because if you're not getting that, that draw a card trigger, it's going to feel real bad. It, you also have four green, blue for Adapt 4. So six mana, you can put four counters on it, and each creature you control the one one counter on it has trample. I'm not a big fan of Zagana. I mean, I think you certainly, certainly need other creatures with one one counters on it uh, in order to to make it good. But yeah, if you do, if you can play Jade Light into this, or you know, you play, play your Hadana's Climb into this, could be could be good there. I think I'm going to go with a, a C in for Zagana, maybe a C plus. Um. All right, all right, y'all are talking me into it in chat here. All right, y'all are talking me into it. B minus, B minus, because yeah, you you can certainly uh kind of build around it and, Mer yeah, like it just fits into Merfolk obviously and like Simic already has a lot of things we talked about with like the green creatures how we want to put one one counters on like some of like those those two drop green creatures that are so good. If we're uh, that have adapt, if we're putting some some one one counters on those things, Zagana just works with that really well. Doesn't die to Clarion or Ritual of Soot. Uh, very good points there. Um, all right, B minus. I'm going B minus. Zagana is great when things are going well, which Merfolk are good at anyway. That's a that's a good point. It's it's not good when things are not going well. If you're just playing Zagana on an empty board, you're just looking at four mana four four, and that's a, a real big downside. Zarta Goblin is our next card. Red green for a two two riot. I think this is an okay card. Um, you know we had two two haste before with the Rakdos card. Uh, but it also had the ability to sacrifice creatures to deal damage, and that card I really liked. This one doesn't have that ability. Um, it's just kind of a two-mana, two-two riot. I think this is a D. I think this will see a little bit of play in some Gruul aggro decks kind of thing. It may see some play, but there there are tons and tons of good two-drops in the set. That's that's one thing about this set. The, the two-drops, as like I've kind of found out as we've been talking here, lots of good two-drops. Um, and even in red and green have lots of good two drops. So I'm not really expecting this to kind of see play over a lot of the other good two drops we've seen in the set. So maybe even just an F, but I'm going to go D with that card. Footlight Fiend, you can either play a red or a black to cast this 1-1, one, one, and whenever it dies, it deals one damage to any target. I'm again going to go ahead and go with a D here. I think normally you wouldn't play this card, but... I think this works really well with uh, what we kind of talked about earlier. If we want like a theater of horrors, experimental frenzy kind of deck, it does work well with Judith, of course. Um, we'll see if it actually makes it over other things, other one drops and, and stuff like that. I'm still kind of skeptical that this is going to be one of the best 60 cards to put. Um, it does survive the Rakdos coin toss. So you can put it in your, your Rakdos coin toss deck if you want to make that deck. Um, but yeah, but yeah, Judith, it does work really well, Judith, for sure. Yeah, it is a Mog Fanatic. Yeah, actually, so I think I'm maybe underrating that a little bit. I'm going to go C minus actually with that card instead of D or maybe D plus D plus. All right. Final answer. D plus it's closer to D than C. All right, up next we have Rubble Slinger 2 and a uh, 2 and a Gruel. I guess we could just call it that because it's either a red or a green. So 2 and a Gruel for a 2-3 reach. That is an F. Scuttle Gator 4, Simic Simic for a 6-6 six, six Defender. And it has 6 Simic Simic for Adapt 3. As long as Scuttle Gator has a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it, it can attack as though it didn't have Defender. That is an F. Senate Griffin, 2 Azorius Azorius for a 3-2 flying when it enters the battlefield, scry 1. That is an F. 
Viscopa Vampire, two and a Zor- two and a uh, Orzov for a three one life link, which is also an F. These things are Fs. All right, we're we're to some. Uh, these cards are good. Why is it? Why do I have to design it like this? All right, uh, Bedeck or Bedazzle. This is you can either pay. Bedeck is. Rakdos, Rakdos, for an instant, target creature gets plus three, minus three until end of turn. And then Bedazzle is four black red for an instant. Destroy target non-basic land. Bedazzle deals two damage to target player, or sorry, target opponent or planeswalker. The Bedeck part is is worthwhile. You know, like, Two mana, give give a creature plus three, minus three. That's Spatial Contortion. You know, so Spatial Contortion is is worthwhile, and that kills a lot of things. And remember, you can you can also put that on your own creature if you have, like, a bigger creature that you can use as, like, a pump spell if you're, like, dealing damage kind of thing. The, so that that part's good. The, non, the non-basic part... Or like the other part, six mana destroy a non-basic land, deal two damage to target opponent or planeswalker. You're not gonna really want to do that as much. It does kill Wild Growth Walker. Yep, that's that's very true. And basically all the two drops in the format. I think I'm gonna give this card a C minus. Um I'm gonna give this card a C minus. You yeah, lightning strike's probably gonna be better most of the time, isn't it? I'll go with the C minus. Does Recadanto Vanguard? All right, we got Carnival or Carnage, but that one being that card being a rare is weird to me. That that's that that's a rare. The Bedeck Bedazzle. Carnival or or Carnage. Uh, Carnival deals one damage to target creature or Planeswalker, and one and one damage to that permanent's controller, and Carnage deals. Three damage to target opponent. That player discards two cards. Okay, so Carnival, I'm not excited about at all. Carnage, though, Carnage is good. Carnage is is just one mana more for Blightning, of just deal three damage to the op- opponent and they discard two cards. That's a a great card um, for like Blightning. We have to pay one mana more for that, but that's still. It's mind drop plus they deal takes three. That's that's good. And then yeah, Carnival can just kill some random things. You know, it just chips in like you just get upside also. Like you're probably playing this card for the Carnage part of it, but sometimes you just play against Land War Elf and you're just like, oh, just deal one to Land War Elf and and kill it. And yeah, or yeah, you just need to enable Spectacle. Yeah, it's a very cheap Spectacle enabler. That's true. Um. Now. You cannot. One thing I want to point out about Carnival, like let's say you're going off with like my like a experimental frenzy, casting a lot of things, or you want to play Carnival early. It does say Carnival deals one damage to target creature or planeswalker. You do need a creature or planeswalker on the battlefield to cast Carnival. You can't just cast the Carnival part just to turn on Spectacle, just to just to deal one damage to the the controller. Um. So you do need a creature or planeswalker out there. Blighting was good because of Blood Alert Braid Elf for sure, but it's still a fine card, I think. So overall, I'm going to give the card a C. Um, I think that's a good grade, RX3. I think, I think y'all are calling it an Alien Toad Shop. I think this is a C, but this is a this is a good card. Um, yeah, so if you miss Blightning, you got, you got the new Blightning here with Carnage. I think that's a, a solid C. It's a, a solid card. Um, Up next, Collision or Colossus. Collision deals six damage to target creature with flying or Colossus. So that's, that's, sorry, one and a gruel to deal six damage to target creature with flying. Not a very good card. But you also get Colossus, which is red and a green. Target creature gets plus four, plus two, and gains trample until end of turn. Also not a very good card. Put them together, we have an F. Flexible F. F for flexible. Uh, Consecrate is one and an Orzov for exile target card from a graveyard, draw a card. So you, you do have, you know, two mana draw a card that, you know, that's a really, that's still a high floor. You know, at the very worst, you're, you're cycling this card away and you get to exile a card from a graveyard. 
um, at the very worst. And consume is two white black sorcery. Target player sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures they control. You gain life equal to its power. Consume is nice. It is really good against, like against Carnage Tyrant, right? Consume just gets rid of Carnage Tyrant and not any of the other things. It's like, hey, you have to sacrifice your Carnage Tyrant because that has the most power. So that's that's pretty good. So overall, you have a real low floor of just being able to cycle and, and draw, just cycle cycle the card away. Of course, a card has there has to be some kind of card in a graveyard for you to cycle, by the way. But then, but then you can be like, hey, sacrifice your biggest creature. That's pretty good. Um, good question, Step. I'll answer that a little bit. So overall, I think this this card. Uh, um, I think I'll give this probably a C plus. I don't, you know, it's not like a format stapler or anything like, like that. I think this could see just a regular amount of play, or maybe just a C. If we had like Shock and Dalton's Bodyguard, C. This is a C. We'll give this a C. Like this is this is a card that could could just kind of see some play in the format. I can see here. So all right, so I think I maybe went a little bit too fast on Colossus here. You know, been going through. Um, these cards. So Step has a good good question about this. Is saying Colossus is kind of like like the Colossus part is is kind of like Gore Clan Rampager. Gore Clan Rampager being a four four creature, of course, is a whole lot better. I'm not really into this collision part of the card too much. We have like better things to deal with that. But if I could see a Gruel Aggro deck playing this for the for this part, I suppose, if you wanted to end games real quickly. I gave this card an F before. I guess I could see some some play with this. I'm gonna, yeah, and it could kill like a Niv or a Drake or whatever with Collision. Let's let's go it up a little bit. We'll go we'll go D. Yeah, D D plus. Just it's just a card that you could see see a little bit of play in the format. Go D plus. There's just a lot like there's better cards than Collision in the format. Um, Colossus though, I could see. Like some kind of real low to the ground gruel aggro deck wanting to play Colossus, I suppose. D plus. All right, depose is one in an Azorius for tap target creature draw card, and deploy is two white blue for create two one one colorless thopter artifact creature tokens with flying, and then you gain one life for each creature you control. I like this card quite a bit. I think this is the thing is is like these cards aren't going to see tons of play, but this has a lot of flexibility here. You know, I think this is just another C, but maybe maybe a C plus. Both are instant. Both are good. Tap the creature, draw a card is certainly a, a good mode, and you can gain a decent amount of life and make two one ones at, at instant speed. That's a good card. But I don't think this is like a, a format staple among multiple archetypes, which is like where I'm at with B. So I'm thinking this is like a C plus. But this is a this is a solid card for sure. Solid card. Incubation and in congruity. Incubation for uh, a simic mana. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it onto the battlefield. No, sorry and put it into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Okay, so yeah, we have like a commune with dinosaurs kind of thing. You look at the top five, you put a creature card in your hand. That's that's a, a pretty good card. Um, <laughs> we have, you know, we're looking at five cards and getting a creature. Uh, yeah, that's, that's perfectly a reasonable card. It does miss land. So in order to play Incubation, you have to have a whole lot of creatures, right? Because you want to be looking at you want to be looking at creatures but then like playing lands and playing spells like incubation lower your creature count so that's a, a pretty good card but it's not like like perfect or anything then you also have but you also have incongruity so incongruity is one green and a blue exile target creature that creature's controller creates a three three green frog lizard creature token now that is something giving 
giving uh, Simic Collar's removal is awesome. I could see like Merfolk loving this card. Er, Merfolk plays lots of creatures for incubation. They don't have good removal. So yeah, that is, that's pretty awesome for, for that kind of archetype. I'm going with B. I'm going to B with this card. I think this is um, a defining card of like Merfolk type strategies. And I think this is like just kind of like a four of in those. Gives them solid removal, gives them uh, an Ancient Stirrings type effect. I think I'm going to go with a B. All right. Uh, basically, like all the split cards are, are pretty good. They were all pretty good the last set. I think they're all pretty good this set too. Um, all right. This one's a rare. This is Repudiate. It's really hard to read these like far away and sideways. They're basically upside down for me. But anyway, uh, repudiate is Simic Simic, counter target activated or triggered ability. Um, so you know it's stifle. It's a two mana stifle. It's not that's not worth running as a card. Uh, so thankfully we have just like the ability to have that, you know. But that's not really worth playing as a card. But also you can have replicate. One green, blue, create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. So it's it's clone. Clone usually costs four mana, so we get three mana for clone. Or you can just sometimes counter target activated or triggered abilities if you want. You know? So that's pretty awesome, putting these together, right? Um, yeah, it could, could pair with a quasi-duplicate deck. So you can quasi-duplicate and replicate. Um, yeah, so I like the card. I... Th I think it's still just going to be like a C for me. You know, could see some regular amount of play in the format kind of thing. I think this is a C, but I like the card. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's not exactly just clone because it is only your own creatures. Do you think we can put together a viable mill deck? I mean, it depends on how you define viable. But I think you can maybe win some games with a mill deck. Maybe. All right, this one's also a rare. This is an Orzov one. Revival has Orzov Orzov for return target creature with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Um, so, you know, we get we get a raised dead effect. Uh, something, I mean, getting your Judith back into play is awesome. Uh, if, you, if your Judith dies, yeah, revive Judith, awesome. You want to revive like Jade Light Ranger, awesome. But yeah, getting Judith back. Real good. Uh, then it also has Revenge. Four white and a black. Double your life total. Target opponent loses half of their life rounded up. That's that's not really that good of an effect for six mana, honestly. It's like... I mean, because you're going to be like some... If you're like an aggressive Judith deck with this, them losing half their life is like losing like... I don't know what, they're at eight when you have six mana. They lose like four life and like double your life total. Is that really going to matter that much? Is this better than find finality? No, no. I would rather have find finality, put two creatures from my graveyard into my hand uh, and have finality. Yeah, I would rather have find finality. I think this one's a D, unfortunately. Revival Judith is awesome. That's about the best this card can do is revival Judith. I think this is a D. Revenge, I don't, yeah, we'll see. I, I don't think Revenge plays very well, but maybe. Maybe it plays a little better than it looks. If your opponent just gains tons of life, you know, like they're playing whatever life gain deck and you couldn't get through, uh, who knows. All right, Thrash Threat. Thrash is, uh, this is a Gruel one. It's Gruel Gruel for target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. So a couple of things about this. So this is like Rabid Bite we've seen with Sorcery Speed. This is Instant Speed. Your creature just deals damage, so you don't need to fight, which is really good. And keyword here is it deals the damage to a Planeswalker, too. You can have your creature just deal damage to like a, a Teferi that enters. That's awesome. So that's that's a pretty solid card. Um, it's not you know amazing or anything, but that's a solid card. You also could either have Threat. Threat is two red green just to create a four four red green beast creature token with trample. So it's kind of like, um, uh, what's 
the card we were just talking about with this split card that that is also a four four with trample. You know, so you can also just play this as a four four with trample. Gore Clan. That's like Gore Clan Rampager, right? The it's basically Gore, Gore Clan Rampager here that you could also just have like as a removal spell sometimes. It's very similar to Gore Clan Rampager, honestly, with, with like this card here. Um, I don't know if I want to go like B plus or anything like that. I could see B though. I could see this being a B. This card. This card's probably like a B. This is this is a pretty good card. I think I think I'd go B. I don't think I want to go B plus, but yeah. Yeah, it's Smash to Fairy with this. I like it. All right, then Warrant Warden. Um, this is Azorius Rare, same kind of thing. It's Azorius Azorius for put target attacking or blocking creature on top of its owner's library. That is honestly a great card. Um, putting the attacking creature, just put it back on top of their library. That's a, that's a great card. Basically takes away their next draw step. That's a really good card for two mana. Or you can have Warden, three white, blue, create a 4-4. And that's a sorcery, create a 4-4 white and blue Sphinx creature token with flying and vigilance. That is not a good card. That's just Sarah Angel. Sarah Angel is not good. But you can have Sarah Angel with Warrant. So Warrant is real good. Sarah Angel, not good. Kind of put them together. You have like the option, right? You don't always have to cast Warden or Warrant. I'm I'm thinking like C plus here. There's lots of still other good removal and everything. Will this really see very much play? Who knows? Uh, it is bad against ETB effects. Like you don't want to put a Jade Light Ranger back on top of their library, for example, with Warrant. And Warden, that really just doesn't add much at all to the card. Like the control decks they're wanting to play Warrant, they're not gonna care about this Warden thing. So honestly, this is Maybe like a C actually, so I think I go C with Warrant Warden. I yeah, but Warrant is really good, so maybe I'm underrating it a little bit. All right, we're also going to go ahead and put in the artifacts here, but I think the artifacts should go pretty quickly. We have a lot. There's not a whole, very many artifacts. Uh, all the lockets we know what lockets do. Lockets are just Fs. So we have the Azorius locket which is an F, the Gruul Locket, Orzhov Locket, Rakdos Locket, Simic Locket. Those are all Fs. Gate Colossus. Eight colorless uh, for an 8-8. Eight, eight. It costs one less to cast for each gate you control. Can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. And when a gate enters the battlefield under your control, you may put Gate Colossus from your graveyard on top of your library. This is like a, yeah, this could be your D in your gate gate deck. Yeah, if you want to you put this in your janky, guilt, your janky gate deck, sure. But that's it. The art is awesome. The art is really good. And the, art, the art's really good on the lockets, too, if that's what you're talking about. Uh, Glass of the Guild Pack, two colorless. Multicolor creatures you control get plus one, plus one. <laughs> Not playing any decks tonight, Burt. That card's good. Uh, I, I'm calling this a B. I think this is a, a defining card in a single highly played archetype, but maybe even you'd have different multicolored ones. Multicolor, multicolor creatures getting plus one, plus one. There's a lot of good multicolor creatures. I think this is a B. I think this, this could be a, a pretty solid card. Afterlife tokens are black and white is a great point in the chat there. The afterlife tokens being two colors. That's awesome. Um, yeah, this is... I think this is a B. I like this card quite a bit. All right, Gruel Locker was an F. Junk Troller, four mana, 06 Defender. Um, put target card from a graveyard on the bottom of its owner's library. If this even fits in the Arcades deck, it would be a D, but it's probably even an F. I don't even know if this would fit in the Arcades deck being a four mana, 6-6. Six, six. I think it's just F. But we, we've given, there's some other good card, good defenders that we've given D to because of the Arcades deck, but I think that, that one's just an F. Scrabbling Claws, one, it's just one mana, uh, target player exiles a card, you can tap it, target player exiles a card from their graveyard, or pay one and sacrifice it, exile target card from a graveyard. I think this is a, this is also just a D, this is, this is graveyard hate, but it's not that good a graveyard hate. Um, 
it's just like relic progenitus for the first part where you, where you just have them exile and then you can you can sack it draw a card like relic but instead of exiling all the cards it's just you get to choose one card to exile so maybe that's okay for standard i'm giving that one a d screaming shield uh is a one mana equipment equipped creature gets and uh it has equipped cost of three and equipped creature gets plus zero plus three and has two tap target player puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard that's an f hey planeswalker academy so, not even in the mill deck you're playing that that card sphinx of the guild pack Seven mana, five five is all colors flying and is hex proof from mono colored. It's a weird card. It's, it's an F. It's a weird card. Hey, Tychorus. And finally, last card Tomb of the Guild Pact. Five mana artifact. When you cast a multicolored spell, draw a card. And also tap add one man of any color. This one's kind of cool. Um, you know, like Vanquisher's Banner was like five mana artifact where you could, whenever you cast, you choose like your creature type. Whenever you cast your creature's type, you draw a card. But this also is a mana rock too. So like mana rock is like, is like, is like a real thing here. Um, I, I don't think this is an F. A lot of people say F in, in chat, but like, Vanquisher's Banner is like really good, and this is this this is just any multicolored spell. Remember, spell multicolored spell, not creature. So, you know, like uh, discovery, cast discovery, draw a card. Also, so yeah, so like Banner's Anthem, but Banner's is like just for yeah, all like the split cards. You know, like all like all these split cards we were just talking about that were like, you know, like white white for warden or whatever. Um so banner anthems you for for only a specific creature type. This is just all your multicolor spells, draw a card, and it also adds a mana. All those cheap split cards. Um Yeah, this with disinformation campaign, draw an extra one, keep returning it. This is not an F. You know, this is this is probably like a D you build around this, but this is not an F. Like this you could play this in standard. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. This is not an F. Um and there we go. So that's the complete Guilds of Ravnica. Wow, I messed it up. I always want to say that. Sorry. Take two. This is the that was the complete Ravnica Allegiance. <laughs> Uh, set review. I hope y'all had a wonderful time. Um, and good night, Rev Daddy. Yep. So thanks for watching that. If you're watching over on YouTube, uh, later, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, please. Um, and, uh, hope you enjoyed all of that. I hope you're as hyped for Ravnica Allegiance as I am. We're going to be playing, um, a 12 hour Ravnica Allegiance stream on the 17th. That's when it comes out on arena. We're going to be playing lots of limited so we can play, uh, with the new cards. We're going to be doing sealed, uh, to start with maybe some drafts towards the end of the stream, but certainly focusing on sealed. Um, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to do the land. All the lands are a pluses. Lands are great. Um, so that's on the 17th. So be looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, if you were watching on YouTube, thanks for watching and I'll see.